Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony Transcribed. Lady, lend an ear and give a cheer. Your dinner problem is solved. How? Why, by serving Kroger quality beef, everybody's favorite main dish. So serve the beef that's delicious, the beef that's tender, the beef that's juicy. Yes, I mean Kroger quality beef. The beef you can count on being the very best right now. What a welcome home for your family when they find its beef for dinner. What a pleasant surprise to find beef stew, as savory a dish as ever graced a table. Or to discover a delicious, magnificently thick steak. Or a mouth-watering roast of beef in the place of honor. Whatever their favorite may be, you can be sure your family is going to be mighty happy to find that tasty, nourishing beef dish where they like to see it most right on their own dinner table. So hurry up and get Kroger quality beef. Visit your Kroger store, step up to the meat counter, and ask for it. Remember, Kroger quality beef is deliciously tender and juicy, and it's at your Kroger store now. And now, hearts in harmony. Suzanne Gibbs has flown into a sudden and mysterious rage and ordered her husband, Pat, out of the house. So Pat spent last night at Johnny Keith's home, and Penny could not find out what happened because Suzanne locked herself in the room. It is the next morning now, and at the Gibbs' home, the doorbell rings. Just a minute. Oh. Hello, Miss Gibbs. Oh, hello, Professor Rogers. Oh, you look disappointed. Expecting someone else? Yes, I, I thought you were Pat. Oh, come on in. Oh, thanks. How are you? Fine, thanks. You? Oh, I'm all right. I didn't get to bed till quite late. Oh, you don't show it. Uh, you, you thought I was Pat, Miss Gibbs. Is that brother of yours usually out so early in the morning? It's not quite 8 o'clock yet. No, but Pat and Suzanne had a fight last night. Oh. At least that's what it sounded like when Pat went out of the house. And I... Oh, I, I, I see. And uh, the, the poor male had to spend the night at the club. No, Pat's not the club kind, Professor. The last thing he asked me was when he went to the door, he said, uh, I'm going to bunk with Johnny Keith tonight. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, that's certainly a lot better than having to sleep in the park. It was rather cold out last night. Oh, Professor, this wasn't one of those comic motion pictures, Pat. Oh, I, 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 I didn't mean to make fun of the situation, Miss Gibbs. I know I... you didn't. I just wanted to explain it to you. In fact, if it isn't imposing, I'd like to have your opinion in the matter. Oh, well, if my opinion is worth anything... It usually I... is, Professor. Thank you. Um... You remember when Suzanne ran away from home, hmm? Yes, yes, quite well. She was under the impression, I think, that everyone hated her, that she was unwanted. Yeah. Well, the same thing is bothering you now, Professor. Mm. Is that a sign of mental illness? Well, I'm a chemist, Miss Gibbs, and not really qualified to say, but... From the little I do know about such things, I'd say Suzanne is suffering from an obvious persecution complex. How serious, it's hard to say. Can it be serious? Oh, yes, yes, it can, Miss Gibbs. In fact, any complex can become so strong it may unbalance the mind and produce one of the many forms of insanity. That's what I thought. Oh, you you aren't afraid Suzanne is insane, are you? No, no, I don't think she's insane, Professor, but I do think there's something wrong with her mentally. And, uh, as you say, there's a chance it might develop into insanity unless something's done about it. Well, what makes you think so? Oh, the fight last night, for one thing. Uh It really wasn't a fight. I I could hear Suzanne screaming at Pat upstairs. Freddie and I were sitting down here. I see. Pat wasn't saying a thing. What she was ranting about to him didn't make the slightest bit of sense. She was even contradicting herself half the time, but... One thing she did say over and over again was, you hate me, all of you hate me. You want to take my baby from me. Oh. Well, that doesn't sound as if it should be taken lightly, Miss Gibbs. But as I said, I'm not the one to make any diagnosis. I'd take her to the doctor if I were you. Or rather, have Pat take her to the doctor. Oh, it's not that easy, Professor. She'll have something to say about going to a doctor, and I'm afraid it won't be pleasant or cooperative. Yeah. Well... I tell you what I can do. Mm -hmm. Suzanne has always 
well, rather like me. Perhaps if I talked to her, I could... Talk her into seeing a doctor. Well, if not that, maybe find out what's on her mind. If you wouldn't think I was imposing, I'd be glad to try it. Oh, Professor, I'm imposing on you, even telling you this. It's really not your problem. Well, I'm happy to make it mine, Miss Gibbs, if it'll be of any help to you. Oh, thanks. You've been enough help to me already. But, um, you would be helping Pat and Suzanne. Professor Rogers, I know they love each other. They don't deserve trouble like this. Well, being in love makes up for a lot of things, Miss Gibbs. Uh, uh so, so they tell me. <laughs> oh, yes, so I hear. Uh, so you know, don't you? I did know. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. No? Well, I, I, I was afraid for a moment I'd... Well, overstep my bounds. You had no bounds to overstep, Professor. I don't? Nope. That's strange. I always felt I did. Maybe I'm suffering from some sort of complex, too. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not, but, uh, well, when I came in, what I wanted to say, uh, I think, well, I if you don't mind. If I don't mind? Yes, if it won't be presuming too much, I'd, uh, I'd like to have a share of, well, <laughs> I can't put it that way. I, I, I should say, I'd like to help you to find a way to more pleasant things from now on. More pleasant things, Professor? Uh -huh. That should be kind of easy, don't you think? Well, I... I, I, I don't know, Miss Gibbs. You see, I... Well, I, I'm not very good at getting my point across outside a, a classroom, and I... Well, I, I wouldn't like to see you in a classroom the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I would like to, uh... You would like to what, Professor? Uh, like to... Well, maybe... Maybe we'd better leave it for another time, Miss Gibbs. I, I you, you see, it's getting late, and I have a nine o'clock lecture, as always. I, I'll uh, call you again in a day or two. Jed, Penny must have been expecting us. She's on the porch. Well, yeah, now that's a dutiful daughter for you, Grace. <laughs> Hello, Penny. Hello, Mother. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you, child? Aren't you old enough yet to know not to come outdoors without a coat? Oh, it's dear. cold. Penny, don't you scold me the very first thing. How are you, Mother? Fine. <laughs> Here's something for my favorite daughter. Oh, oh. from her favorite mother. <laughs> hey, how about one of those for me? And make my mother jealous. Oh, no. <laughs> Say, it is kind of chilly out. You're coming in, aren't you? Well, you don't yeah. think we drove all the way down from Mableton just to park out in front of the house, do you? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll get out your side, Grace. All right, dear. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, it was lovely, Penny. There was snow on the ground till we got to Greenwood. Mm, it must have been lovely. Yes, great, uh, when you're driving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two go on in the house. I'll be in a minute with the luggage. All right, all right dear. You're going to stay here, aren't you, Mother? Well, if you'll put up with us for just overnight, oh, dear. Oh, you know we will. There are no rooms at the hotel, and we don't think it's a good idea to open the house for just one night. Oh, golly, no. Say, by the way, um, did Johnny write you that someone wanted to rent your house? Yes, but um, Jed's not sure he wants to rent at that price. After all, the damage to the furniture oh, and know, all darling, the things. Yeah. Well, you're out in the door for me. Oh, thank you, dear. Say, how's my darling little granddaughter? Lovely and sweet as ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so anxious to see her. May I go up right away? Well, um, not just yet, if you don't mind, Mother. Why, dear? Um, Suzanne's in one of her moods, Mother. Moods? Well, she's acting in that strange way again, thinking that everyone hates her. What? I, I spoke to Professor Rogers you about mean... it. She's acting the way she did before she left Pat last time. Well, um, 
Last night, she forced Pat to leave the house. What? It's probably nothing to worry about, darling. Professor Rogers said that... A well, fine I thing. I don't mind being a porter around here, but I don't want to be a doorman, oh, too. Jed, I'm sorry. Let me take one of those suitcases. No, 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 no. I'll hang on to them. I'll take them, I'll take them this far. I think I'll just run them right upstairs and see that granddaughter of mine. I qualify her as her grandfather. Uh, Jed, uh, Penny thinks we better not go up just this minute, dear. No? Oh, why not? Jed, Suzanne isn't feeling very well. It's nothing very serious. Um, Professor Rogers was here this morning. Penny, and... that's the third time you've mentioned Professor Rogers. What is it? Uh, what's the professor got to do with Suzanne not feeling well? He's no doctor. No, but he's been such a good friend, and he's done so much to help Pat and Suzanne and me and other things, that I asked him to see what he thought Penny, about... you call the professor such a good friend. My, that's different from the way you used to feel about him. Well, I didn't quite know him at first, darling. None of us did. <laughs> no, I suppose not. <laughs> what is this, Penny? A little heart trouble with the professor? Jed Billings, that deserves a good, hearty laugh. <laughs> it does, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't hear one. We will not discuss the professor. Come on, both of you. <laughs> Take your things off and make yourself comfortable. I'll run up and see how Suzanne feels. Oh, all right, Penny. Oh, Suzanne's sick, is she? Well... No, Jed, just in one of her moods. Mood, huh? I don't like moods, never did. Oh, I guess she'll get over it. She always did before. Yeah. But never before there was trouble. Doesn't seem to be any of Suzanne's moods are going to bother Penny any. Why, what do you mean, Jed? Well, I, uh, I mean this, uh, this Professor Rogers... Seems Penny has him more than a little on her mind. <laughs> yes, it does seem that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what would you think of it, Grace? You and I having a college professor for a son-in-law. <laughs> so now Jed, too, thinks Penny is more than mildly interested in Professor Rogers. And just what was the professor trying to say to Penny before his shyness got the best of him? Is he in love with Penny? And is Suzanne's moodiness the suggestion of more serious things to come? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. How can you be sure of getting good steaks and roast in these days when fresh and tender Kroger Tenderay beef is so scarce? Well, listen... The answer is right in your own Kroger store. Yes, ma'am, you'll find that your Kroger store does have a supply of good beef. Kroger quality beef. And you'll discover Kroger quality beef is the best that is available on the market right now. Visit your Kroger store at the very next opportunity. That's where you'll find the very best beef that's available on today's market. For full value, for full confidence when you buy steaks and roasts, Always get Kroger quality beef.